Hey YouTube, how are you? Um, I'm gonna do a little video today. I'm gonna repot this little Cypripedium orchid and I got this at the Vancouver Orchid Show. This is what the plant looks like. It's from Phoenix Perennials in Richmond. I've never heard of them, but they had a lot of these beautiful lady slipper orchids. And this one looks like there's four nice big growths there. So I'm going to pot it into a nice new pot and put it outside. Here's my nice pot that I bought. And um, the first thing I do is plug up the little hole. So... What I usually do is put a little piece of paper towel in there in the bottom. The paper towel acts like a bit of a <clears throat> block and stops the dirt from washing out of the bottom. And I'm going to use just some regular potting soil, nothing crazy. Um, if I'll show you this again, this looks like it's planted mostly in perlite. The guy who sold it to me was saying something about how <clears throat> they don't like to have their feet wet. But I think this is a bit overkill personally. I have another lady slipper orchid and it grows fine in just regular dirt. But these kind of orchids, they do... I believe grow with like a specific fungus in the earth so I want to kind of keep as much of that and put it in the pot if I can. So anyway first thing I'm going to do is take this out of the pot and I have a little dish here to collect all this earth and perlite and I'm going to try and gently pull it out well that made a bit more of a mess than I was expecting so I'm gonna take all of this and I'm just gonna dump it into the bottom of the pot that can be what is in the bottom for the orchid to sit in and this is what it looks like with all of the roots and actually I'm going to try and plant it exactly the depth that it was so that these little green tips are above the surface of the soil so I'm just going to take this use up the rest of this bag I'm going to pack that in, not too firmly, but, you know, just tamp it down. Actually, you know what, this is... The other soil I have looks... it's like an indoor potting soil, so... I'm actually going to take all this... <laughs> soil back out. I want this uh, stuff for the top. So I'll put the indoor potting soil more in the bottom. The only thing, the only difference with indoor and outdoor potting soil usually is the indoor is kind of more peat mossy and perlite and you can see that compared to the two this one has less perlite and it's more earthy. And this one is more like fluffy and so I'll just put that in the bottom. It'll be fine. <clears throat> Actually this works out better because this has more of this like fluffy perlady soil. And there we go. That's kind of 
guess that's kind of at the right height that I want it. So now I'm going to make a little hole here for where I want this root ball to go. And I want this in the center of the pot and I want it to be approximately the same height that it was in its other pot. And this is a good time of year to repot things in the garden because you know they're getting ready to come to life and put on all their new growth and vigor into roots and new growths so so I'm just gonna cover this all up and I'm just kind of squishing everything down with my fingers pretty easy. I want to use up all of this earth so it's going to come right up to the rim of the pot but actually once it starts to um, get watered and stuff all of this will settle down. And I've kind of lost the grow tips here so you can see they're there. So what I'm going to do is just like pick it up and kind of stick my finger under there and kind of bring it up just a bit. There we go. So they're a little bit deeper than they were but that's fine. Nature finds a way So it's all tamped down and that's what it looks like. So now I'll just put it outside and give it a little water. And I'll meet you out there. Look at that beautiful view. So sunny. Anyway, here's our little pot. I'm just going to water this. And I want to give it a lot of water so it's nice and soaked. Let it all soak in. Here's my other one. You can see it's already coming up in a few spots. And I'll put this in a nice spot where it gets sun in the morning. <clears throat> and I'll do a little update in a few weeks. See you then. Hey guys, so that last video was time stamped on March the 26th and today is May the 6th so we're about 5-6 weeks later and my Cyperpedium Auto is now in full bloom looking really really good I thought it would bloom in a couple of weeks, but actually it took about six weeks for everything to bloom. Get ready. Because I really like the yellow lip and the red, ready purple coloration. I really like how big and tall it is. Looks pretty happy and healthy. probably getting 
just the right amount of sun because you can tell the leaves are like a nice bright yellow and I'm really happy that it bloomed for me. I hope that it grows well and grows into a nice big clump in this pot and in future years I will continue to have blooms. My other one is not blooming this year unfortunately but what I am happy about is that last year there was one or two growths per plant and there's three little plants in there but this year there's a lot more like this one has three this one has three it has a third one coming up here and this one has two so and I'm happy that it survived the winter because it was in these little crappy pots and I was really surprised it froze and I had forgot all about it so I just planted into this nice pot this year so I'm hoping that it also will bloom next year and it likes the space These orchids grow wild in parts of Canada. There's like a pink one. I remember my mom and dad took me to a little forest outside of Ottawa where they grow wild there and the like pink and white variety. So that's pretty cool that orchids can grow in places where there's really, really harsh winters. Ottawa has some of the harshest winters in all of Canada. So but I really like these red and yellow ones. Anyway, thanks for watching.